Hi everyone, it's Allison from Crochet Connections again and today our video is going to be on double crochet. I have my swatch here again and this is our double crochet stitch. And I also have another example here. As you can see this cute little N. This uh, stitch is here, a regular double crochets and these points are made on the inside using decreases and on the outside increases. It's another thing we're going to learn. So you can see how something very simple can turn this very standard beanie into something personalized and very cute. So as always we're going to start with our chains and our slip knot. So we have our yarn and normally I've shown you how to do this with two fingers but if you've been practicing I do it with one finger now so I just wrap it around over my one finger and take my yarn over the top of the first loop but leave it on my finger take the yarn from the back up and over and off and I pull my finger up to tighten this loop here and we'll just run quickly over the chains so I'll just pull that tight So remember how you're holding your yarn. I like to hold mine with my fingers like this. With, remember your scissors and your gun fingers using your middle finger and your thumb. Other people like to wind it around their little finger. Then use their scissor fingers, their gun fingers, middle and their thumb. So whichever way is most comfortable for you. And of course however you like to hold your crochet hook. Okay, so do you remember how to do your yarn over? Well, we'll go over that again. We're making sure our hook is pointing down, as it is here. We're going to go under our yarn, go behind it, and bring our hook over the top. And we're going to remember to keep our tension up a little bit. So you, you can see my how there's a little bit of looseness there, just in here, because I've had my hook pulling up and just pull straight through and just pull at a little bit of an angle when you go to go through that loop. When you get to about here start to pull at an angle so that your loop doesn't fall off your hook. Okay so once again we reposition our thumb and middle finger and I just need to tighten my yarn here. Doesn't matter if you have to stop and you know pull on your yarn here that's good to help you keep the right tension. Okay, so once again, and if you need to turn your hook when you go around your yarn, feel free to do that. I find it um, sometimes distracts me and I find it easier just to keep my hook facing down because I know it will come through then. Because if I have as you can see my hook is facing the back. If I do this I know I have to physically turn my hook and I'll just show you my wrist action then. I know I have to physically do this. You see how much extra work my wrist is doing? Whereas I know that's the only work I have to do with my wrist if I keep my hook straight. Okay so I'll go over that again. I'm holding my the last chain I just did with my thumb and my middle finger. I've got my tension on my yarn. I've got my hook facing down. I'm going under my yarn, behind it and back over. I've got my hook facing down. I've got a little bit of pressure on the loop here. You can either do that by pulling up on your loop or by putting just a little bit of pressure on the chain down here where your thumb and your finger is and pulling through. So I'll do that one more time. And once you get used to doing your change, you'll be able to do four or five without moving these fingers. So I'll just move mine a little bit and we'll do that again. So you go under your yarn, around the back and over. And come straight through with your hook at that little bit of an angle. And that's the beginning of your chains. And I have some chains already made up. I have up a little I... demonstration made up before we move on to our double crochet. 
Okay everyone, so I have my um, chain here and I've done a long chain because I'm going to do things a little bit different this time. I'm going to show you how to do your double crochet which is this stitch down here and our double crochet is equal to one chain in height. So if you have a pattern that calls for um, 20 stitches across you'll make your chain of 20 and then you will do one extra chain for the height because that will that chain there will end up going up to make your first chain unless to make your first stitch unless your pattern says otherwise so if I was working with my uh, double trebles I would do my number of um, chains across and then as you can see here I have chained up four because that is the height of my double treble. So I would chain across, for example, this is 20 stitches. I've done my 20 stitches and then I would chain an extra four to go up the height. And then I would work back across my row. Okay, I have two examples here for when we've learned our um, double crochet of increasing and decreasing. This is um, an our increase one. Um, down here is our chain and I've done one row and then I've done two rows of increases and I focus the increases just on this end. So it looks a bit like a, um, a candy cane and this looks like it's exactly the same shape but it's not because if you can see I have my last loop I did here and my tail where my chain began well that's down here I would have to turn that this way to get it in the same position and even then it's still not in the same position I'd have to turn it backwards can you see the difference because this large side here is actually where I started my chain and you can see how all these big stitches are actually two stitches worked into one to make it smaller. So when you work your increases it will give you a rounded out edge but when you work decreases it will actually take your work and do this. So yes but first of all we're going to learn how to do our double crochet. Okay so first of all we've got our chain and you remember that our chains are these little V's here. Okay, so remembering that this on our hook is called a loop and does not count. And this first V here, this first chain does not count. Because that will be the chain that takes us, gives us the height to work back across our chain. Okay. So we're going to work under this next loop here. If you can see I'm pushing my hook under just the one loop okay so I'm holding that with my middle finger on my hook and I'm holding my thumb and middle finger I'm yarning over as I normally do because I'm holding my yarn as I prefer I'm pulling through and I've got everything still a little bit loose at the moment because it's my first one and I'm holding with my thumb and middle finger underneath and I'm holding right underneath that stitch I'm going to yarn over again I just used my thumb to make that easier I've got my hook facing down I've got a little bit of tension up on my hook to make it easier and I'm pulling straight through and I'm doing the little angle and twist so my loop doesn't come off and you've just done your first double crochet so we'll repeat that so you've just got to look at your chain now and go okay so there is the one we just worked into so this next loop here is our next stitch okay so we just push in there we yarn over by going back behind and over we pull through, have everything a little bit loose but not too loose remember because we can always tighten it up holding where your stitch will be 
give a little bit of tension on your yarn now. So we've got half our stitch done now because we have two loops. We're going to yarn over, put tension on our loops now, pull straight through, start giving it that angle and twist around. And you have two double crochets. So I'll do that again. Go in, reposition, yarn over, pull up, reposition, yarn over, pull through. We have three. I'll do that a couple more times. I go in, yarn over, and pull up. Okay, yarn over, reposition, little bit of tension, pull straight through with a bit of an angle and the twist to make sure we don't fall off our hook. And we've got another stitch. Okay, now I'm going to change colours to lavender because this gives a really nice contrast when we turn our rows. So it'll help you get a better understanding. This is a bit of an advanced technique for when you get a bit further on. But like I said, it gives you a better understanding. So if you're having trouble finding your next stitch, you can just, you know, stretch it out a bit and then push it in a bit as well. And you'll it'll loosen all the stitches up. And can you see how when they squish together, these edges bulge out a bit? And you can say, okay, well that's where my stitch is. It must be this stitch here. And if it's too, if you've accidentally made your stitch too hard to get into, remember this is a hook. You can use it to lever up your stitch. So you can go in there with your hook and lever it up and go in. Okay, so I'm just going to lay my yarn over my hook. You'll learn how to do this when we move on to doing trebles and granny squares. That's a little bit beyond us at the moment though. Okay, so we've got half of our stitch on at the moment. I'm just going to pull on my tails a little bit. I'm holding both of those tails as I'm holding my stitch as well. I've got my yarn. I'm just going to pull on my yarn down here to get a bit better tension. I'm going to yarn over again. Got my horizontal tension. It's pulling straight through, angle and twist. And because I have tails here, I can pull on them to give proper tension because of course it will be looser. Okay so I'll do a bit zoomed in now. Hopefully it won't be too blurry. Okay so we go into our next stitch. Reposition, yarn over, pull through, Reposition our fingers, yarn over, tension on our hook, pull through, angle and twist. You see? I'll do that again. Working into the chain. Okay. The tension is most important when you're um, pulling, after you've pulled up your loop and you want to pull through your two loops. So you can sort of, like you pull, th push through, you don't have to have your tension right on your chain now. See I've pulled up and I've pushed through and it's, you know, a little bit loose. So you don't have to worry right at this second because once we reposition our fingers, we can, you know, pull on that strand up here a little bit and that will give us our tension without pulling on this stitch too much. So we'll yarn over again, put tension on our loops up here, pull straight through horizontally, angle up and give the twist. Okay, I'll go do a couple more stitches and then we will turn around and we'll go back along and learn how to, when we get to the end, how to turn.
just move that out of the way. I've done a few more double crochets in my purple and I'm about to turn now so we'll learn how to turn and how to work back down our rows. Um, so basically we remember how our double crochet is equal to one chain in height. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to chain one and then we're going to turn our work and when it says turn work basically all that means is to flip our work over. So that's turning our work. And I'll just move those tails out of the way. And you'll just ignore this because I'm using that for something different later on. Okay. So um, another reason why I used two different colors is it really helps with the demonstration. I'm going to take my um, hook out and get some more yarn. When I zoom in you can see in between um, these, I suppose upside down V's, there's this little spot of blue and there's this little hole and on the black you can see where my finger moves away it changes colour. That's a stitch you're going to work into. And when we work into the stitch, when we were chaining um, we were working up when we were working into the chain we were sort of working sideways to go into the chain but now we're going to be working sort of flat so when we go into our stitch it's going to be flat like this and we're going to pick up these two loops so we will work flat into our chain we will once again yarn over and we'll bring up our loop on our hook so it will come through that hole and we'll do that all the way along and that's another reason I um, like I said I just switched colors and it'll be really handy when we get to our last stitch down here to be able to see what we're doing and it also comes in handy to see when you look at it this way you can see both of these um, little straight um, loops are coming out of one space when, when you look at the back they actually come out of two spaces and that will become important when we're looking at our increases and you'll be able to tell when you're looking at the back of a row where an increase is. Okay so I'm just going to make my yarn loop smaller picking up my yarn getting my tension Okay, so we've chained one and you're looking at your holes and you're thinking this is our first stitch. Well actually it's not because our chain one is sitting right above that hole when you hold it straight. So that space is taken by that chain one. So this next one here is the stitch we will work into. So like I said we're still using our middle finger and our thumb to hold our work. We'll go straight in. See how I've picked up those two loops? Still holding. I'm yarning over. I'm pulling up my loop. I'm okay, getting my tension. So I'm holding where I'm going to do my stitch. I'm yarning over. I'm pr pressing now on my stitch so I won't um, make it too tight. I've got tension up on my hook and horizontally pulling through. See I actually might have done this one a little bit too tight so I'm just going to pull up a little bit before. Okay there we go. Yarning over, putting more tension on it now. Pulling straight through, a little bit of an angle and a twist. And I've made my first double crochet. So technically that's two stitches because the chain one counts as our first stitch and then that's our first double crochet. So we'll repeat that. We'll go into the next stitch, holding, yarning over and pulling up a loop, replacing our fingers, yarning over, putting pressure and tension. And we've just made another double crochet. So I'll do that again. 
Okay, so I'm just doing exactly what I did before, except for this time I'm working into the space between stitches and not into the chain. I think you'll find it will be easier because it's a bit more steadier, um, a bit more solid working into this space. Okay, so I'll do one more stitch and then I will teach you how to do an increase. And all an increase is, is two or more stitches into one space. For example, this space here, I could have two or three or four stitches in that space and it will do like our orange um, swatch he did. It will just expand it like that. Okay, so to do that, we go in, we just make a regular double crochet, yarn over, pull through, and we repeat the process in exactly the same stitch. Yarn over, pull up, and pull through. That is an increase. And you can already see how it sort of put a small bend in our straight work. So I'm just going to do a couple of regular double yeah, crochets. Do Double crochet. Okay, now we're going to do a decrease, and a decrease has worked a little bit differently. You will use this finger. You go into your stitch, you yarn over and pull up a loop, then you will use your finger to hold both of those loops so they don't slip anywhere, slip off. Go into the next stitch, so there's the one we just went into. Go into the next stitch yarn over and pull up a loop and holding underneath the stitches you want to make sure you've got an even tension and they're all at the same height okay so holding them yarning over now we're going to once again put a holding under our stitches and put a tension on our hook yarn over pull through all three loops on our hook at the same time and that is a decrease and see how those two stitches have come into that one loop there. Okay, and we'll do this stitch and you'll see how it will curve it upwards. Now this is a tricky part. Um, because it's the first stitch we made after our chain, it's easier. But this is the end stitch, so if you're having trouble finding it, you can turn it around and you can see how easy it is to spot the two loops. So you can just get your hook and, you know, go under them and just make that hole easy to see. Turn around. You can see, okay, I've got to work in there. Okay, so pick up your yarn. And you just work straight into that stitch. And that is a row with a increase here and a decrease there. And you can see how it's made a slight bump, um, like a peak and a valley. So the valley is very, very hard to see because we don't have many stitches after it. So yeah, and that's what this chain is going to come in. I'm going to show you how to do more defined peaks and valleys. So I'm just going to do one more row so you get a better idea of how to do all this. You go up, turn our work, we miss that first gap because our chain one is our first stitch. We will go in and do a regular double crochet and we'll do a decrease because this is almost the same place that the decrease was. So we've gone in, we've pulled up a loop, we're going to hold on to that loop. We're going in yarning over and pulling up a loop. We're making sure they're all level. We're yarning over. We're holding underneath the stitches. We're getting our tension. We're pulling through and we have our decrease. Okay, so we're going to do a couple more regular double crochets. I sometimes say regular, sometimes I'll say singles just because there's no increases. And what we'll do is, when I was saying before, looking at, you can see how 
On this side you can see how these V's look like they're coming over two spaces. That comes into play here. It's harder to see, but can you see how that is the increased stitch? It's coming out of, both little loops are coming out of one space, whereas the one next to it are coming out of two holes. So you can tell that's the increased stitch. So this is where we're going to do our increased stitch in this next one. It won't be the exact same space, but it will be close enough. So remember that's just two or more regular double crochets in the same space. And we're just going to do regular double crochets down the side. And this will also show you how to work to the end and how to find the last stitch on your swatch. Okay, this is our second last, and I know I've got one more after this one. But you might not be able to tell. You look at it and you go, oh, that looks pretty straight, but it's actually not. Um, there's actually one more stitch just here. So I'll pull out my hook and turn it around. But this one's not as easy to see because of this little bit of yarn here. So if I pull that out of the way, you can sort of see there's two bits of yarn here that are sort of crossed over. But they sort of have a gap here. So if I was to push through there, you might need to wiggle in a bit. And I was to pull these two apart, even though they're crossed over, there's still two loops there. So I know that is correct, that is my stitch. So I'm just going to loosen that up. Another a cheat's way you can do it, I'll show you in a moment. You just go in and you'll repeat your double crochet. And then you will chain one to do your next row. Um, when you're first learning, and I don't really recommend this unless you're doing a lot of stitches and you don't have a lot of time to be fiddling. So you can, I use a bobby pin, but you can get scrap yarn and you just put it around your chain one. Goes all the way around all the yarn so it's not going through any yarn. So that when you turn your work and do your next stitch into your next space, there is actually a bobby pin there to tell you where your stitch is and see how it helps pull that space apart. And you know that when you do your row back down this way, you'll get to this last stitch and you go, okay, I've still got one more. So yeah, so that is doing some increases and decreases. And you can see there's a slight gathering here. And I'll show you how to do um, the increase and the decrease like I did on the um, N for the baby beanie that I did. So let me just go and fix this a little bit and I'll get right to it. Okay, so we're going to learn um, something a little sharper. These are still my regular double crochets. And we're going to learn how to do um, more pointed increases and decreases like the N that I had on that beanie. So basically, um, increases like this. <laughs> and decreases. Okay, so we'll start up the top here. And what I did was I did one increase, then I did a chain one, and then I did another increase, and then I basically moved on to the next stitch. And the reason I did a chain one is because it um, made it sit nicer. It gives, it gives it a nicer point instead of being so bunched up. You can see the chain one there. It doesn't look too um, 
crowded. It just sits nice. And already that is just, it's basically giving it um, three stitches into one but without overcrowding it. See I've still got my two but I've got three. So even though it started like this, now I've got a nice pointed stitch. Okay. So we'll do a few more. And it's easier to um, show you this technique working straight from a chain. So it takes a little bit longer to work into a chain, I think. Because you have to sort of navigate the chain because it twists a bit more. It can be annoying. That's enough space. And you can see how nicely that's pointed. Now for the decrease. Before we've been decreasing just right next to each other. But once again, um, I decreased over three stitches but I still only did a decrease in two. So I went in, I did my yarn over, I pulled up a loop, I'm going to zoom in. Then I skipped this stitch and I went into the next stitch. I yarned over and pulled up a loop, I yarned over and I held under in the middle because there was a bit of a gap there I pulled through all three and it gave it a more rounded once again more pointedly rounded um, decrease without being too um, bunched up and crowded then I just continued going down my chains. So can you see how when I zoom back out Can you see how that works? And once again, I'm not going to finish this row, I'm just going to chain up. I'm going to turn. See what I would normally do, I would, if I, if I was going to repeat that end that I did, I would go to the end and I would go down this side of the chain. But I'm not going to, I'm just going to turn my work. I was going to work down my chain again. I'm going to stop and look at my work just to make sure I know what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to do one more and I'm going to double crochet these two together. So I'm going to double crochet this one and this one. So once again I'm going to skip the middle stitch and that will give me even tighter if I just wanted to keep this point the same as it was, I would just do a regular double crochet, I would skip and then do a regular double crochet and it would keep the same shape as it is now. But we're working decreases, so I'm going to do double crochet, go in. What did I say I was going to do? Did I say I was going to skip this one? Well, I am now anyway. <laughs> I can't remember. Yarn over and decrease. You can see how that has 
pulled that together. I'm going to work into my next stitch. And when you're working on um, an increase, if you're working on an increase that you're going to keep increasing, like we did here, we kept decreasing. Um, if I wanted to keep increasing this up, you would have to put an odd number of stitches so that you could um, keep increasing in the middle stitch. Otherwise it would just go all wonky and to the side and it would just look wrong. Okay, so this is where we did our increase and we look at all our stitches. So there's one, two, and three. So we'll do our double crochet here. And this time, if I can find, see, I'm having trouble getting in my stitch, so I'm going to just use my hook. in. Now I'll do the same again. I'm going to repeat the pattern by just chaining one and doing one more double crochet. So I could have done three double crochets in there but I've already started a pattern so I will keep with that pattern. And then I'll just continue doing double crochets down the side. And the same rule applies when you get to the end of a row. You will just um, find your last stitch, go into it, chain one, and turn. And um, when you do your increases, you will have these little gaps. I'm afraid there's not much you can do about that. But that is how you do... Um, increases and decreases. It's amazing how you can have um, like this orange and the green compared to like this increase compared to this increase. It's amazing isn't it? It's really cool. Okay so we've learnt a new skill and I hope it was clear enough and as always if you have any questions you can um, reply in the comments down below. I'll also put a link to my website, uh, my blog which is www.crochetconnections.wordpress.com you can go there and leave me um, messages and reply to posts and I think I'm going to put up the um, written instructions for the videos that I've been doing. Words aren't my best communicator though so hopefully between the two you'll be able to get it and I'll also be putting up the pattern for the Nixon beanie that I had up, the little N beanie. Okay so um, when I get around to that it's all yours. Enjoy your crochet. Good luck!